Hello, Milton. Hey, Kate. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. You know, this is the 10-year anniversary from when I did my PDC in STEL. Is it? It's one of the, so I graduated November 4th. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah 10 years ago, you were sitting... In that tiny little room. <laughs> right, with the, glow, the the whole world map on the wall. Yes, and, and a zillion time. people crammed in there. Yeah. yeah. Wow. There it was. And, and, you know, and then it leads us to where we are today, right? Exactly. Exactly. So where are we today? How are you first off? Oh, I've been sick. I was super sick. Uh, I I taught an advanced PEDC. In I saw Friday. it. First part of it. So we got the second part to go back to. Um, and it went really well. It was it was good. Um, I'm I think I'm like the, the kind of like the anarchist voice. It's like this, this is super important stuff. And what about all of the people that can't afford it? Oh, what, what what are you gonna do about that? You know, like are you are you all gonna be professional designers and uh, you know have big clients and and make your living this way? Uh, Hardly but, any of you. Yeah, yeah, very likely. I mean, and here again, they may do design, but not have big client uh, clients and do it on a much smaller scale within their community. Well, so, so I was trying to have the perspective that they, they can be active forces in their communities. Um, you know, maybe, and it's not for me to determine, it's for them, but, you know, maybe the most radical thing they can do is not accept money. Uh, you know, that there's this. Yeah, you know, no, there's certainly money. truth in that. And, I mean, that just breaks the system down right there. Well, it, it, put, it's put like at least a, a wider um, concept of economy, right? Yeah. Of what, you know, what is resource and um, what can you make available? I don't know if you saw online last week, somebody asked to be my friend on Facebook because of permaculture, I guess. And, Half these people I don't even know why. <laughs> and but he was saying, you know, just be moaning, I can't do a permaculture course because I have no money. <laughs> and I was just like, you know, and everybody was like jumping on the bandwagon how terrible permaculture is. It's only for the elite, and blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, wait, 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 hold on here a second. You know, uh, first of all, do you give out product and services for free? <laughs> Can we talk about what it takes to put a curriculum and the event part of it together to teach a permaculture design certificate training or any other training for that matter? Yeah. And, and so listed a bunch of stuff. It was very interesting conversation. And I said, you know, one thing I do feel good about is that anybody who really <laughs> wants to take the course, figure it out. Whether it's scholarship money, whether it's payment plan, whether it's both, whether it's work exchange, we figure it out. Because if somebody right. really is saying to me, I want to, I need to do this, I make sure it happens. You know, it's as simple as that. And I don't think that's like the case across the board at all, but it's... Um, it was part of the whole thing with the permaculture guild being formed that it, the bottom line, the mission was about education right? and creating models in your community. And that means accessibility. So, but that also means, Hey, you don't get this for free because we don't get to do it for free. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm sending in a check for advertising in our food co-op, you know, newspaper, yeah, yeah. right, to try to get enough people to make it worthwhile. And there are years that it, it for me personally, it wasn't that worthwhile. I had to pay my co-teachers, but 
there wasn't a lot left in the coffers. Fortunately, that hasn't happened that much. But it was an interesting conversation because there was a piece of it that felt like entitlement. And then there was a piece of it that was just truth, right? Somebody yeah. was saying, and I remember that when they were being given only on the coast before Bill and Becky formed Midwest Permaculture. Right. I felt like I couldn't do a PDC because the airfare and lodging and everything had right. to be added into it. it makes so a big difference. It, a huge difference to have it regionally or locally. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, was that your lovely wife back there? Yeah, yeah. She got hit by a by, uh, by a car uh, oh about God. two weeks ago, and uh, so she's biking cut, or walking. Biking. She got hit by a car. Yeah, um, and so she's she's convalescing right now. Oh my gosh, is she okay? Mostly. She yeah. bumped her head pretty hard, so that that's been. Oh. The, Head the injury biggest thing. Tough, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Time. Really tough. Time and really taking care of yourself. Yeah, I, I think so. Yeah. Oh. Wow, you guys have really been zung. Zung? Zinged. Zapped. Zing, zing, zapped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, I mean, I, I was, uh, this is the sickest I've been for a long time. It was... Um, at least you go, it was a good week and a half and, and I was, I was out. It was, yeah. it was a lung thing and we were, I went to the doctor and they're like, Oh, maybe it's pneumonia. Maybe it's uh, a blood clot. We don't know. So let's check those things out. But it was, they just said, no, nah, it's viral. And tough it out. Take care of yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, hopefully not. I hope they didn't say tough it out. <laughs> well, this is about, it's about all there is to do. Well, yeah. It's a virus. Cool. But you can treat symptoms with not with medications, but with herbs and baths and yeah, it was tea. my skin Picture. hurt. It was the the darndest thing. Like my skin hurt, and then I yeah. couldn't breathe. I felt like I had a lot of pressure on my lungs. Yeah, no, I understand. So. I did have pneumonia and was hospitalized. Yeah. Right? Yes, so. you were. <laughs> I get. I get it. Did you Did you hear the death rattle? because <laughs> that's what happened to me and that's when I had already been to urgent care and when I, uh, the second night of hearing the death rattle I mean it was yeah. actually rattling my huh. whole body was just total rattle that's all I could hear and experience then I, I said you need to take me to the ER now because you know I'm pretty sure I'm going to die if, <laughs> if I don't get a oh, antibiotic goodness. or something in me and um, so yeah no, it that that's a horrible feeling. That's a yeah. horrible feeling. So I'm sorry. I hope you're feeling better. You're, you're not coughing right now. I haven't coughed the whole time. There was oh, no wow. cough. Mine was huge cough. Yeah, no, no coughing. It was just this enormous pressure, and then my skin um, felt really painful. Sensitive. Yeah. 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 Wow. Wow. Weird. It's good stuff. <laughs> Did the kids get it? No, nobody else got it. Oh, good, good. Okay, so what what are you and Bill up to here, and Becky? Uh, well, so we are. Bill would like me to put together like a PDC grads kind of thing, mm -hmm. um, and you know maybe we do like a, a handful, of half dozen, dozen a year, um, just check in with. Uh, previous grad, graduates of Midwest Permaculture and uh, kind of just say like maybe what projects uh, they're really into uh, or proud of or um, and, and, and kind of thinking about how the design course flipped their thinking a little bit or, you know, affected their lives. Yeah. The, the way it's capable of doing that, you know? Right. Um, and so, yeah, so we're, not really sure what the ultimate format's going to be right now. Uh, you say, well, you know, I'd like a 30 second video of like some juice, you know, some, some little moment, uh, or profound thing that you have to say and, and a couple of pictures and, 
you, you know, of like projects right. that you're doing and that kind of thing. So n nothing too, too much. I know I was thinking this would only be a half hour, but, um, you know, I should have, did they show up late? I don't know. No, you were on time. Okay, good. I was scared that I showed up late. Um, no, you didn't show up. It was the, it was the, the half, half past the hour thing that, that gotcha. you know, just looking yeah. at funny and, you know, not, not really thinking well. Uh, so, so we are in a creative, uh, on my end, I, I am in a creative mode. It's kind right? of the sandbox. You're playing in the sandbox. Yeah. Just, what can we come up with? Right. What are you interested in coming up with, with me? Right. Uh, there's a lot of, lot of leeway. Uh, I'm not totally wedded to the video thing, but it'd be cool or, you know, just a little short thing. Um, and yeah because my work's a little outside of the box of both i mean i do the teaching and i do some design but a lot of what i do is social permaculture and so it's with an organization it's with and it's and it's widened out way further than a lot of the permaculture community um uh, has focus on or comfort with, I guess is what I want to say. Yeah. Especially a lot of the younger and older white male testosterone driven <laughs> um, peeps. Put, put in those swales and. Well, yeah. And we're going to just do what we want to do and we're going to yeah. go for the big bucks. And, you know, and that's why that conversation of that young man that I tried to respond to in, in a, even handed way of I mean but that's why those things happen right is somebody like all you have is the people that have a lot of money and those are the big jobs and well a whole bunch of people in the world don't have big money and so there's not very many design jobs gonna offer you up a, a salary of uh, well, and how even they're thinking about how do you get it mainstream but still honor the integrity and the ethics of originally what permaculture is. Right. And so, and that just takes time and being connected to community. I mean, it's, it's totally astonishing to me that I'm teaching a graduate level class at Edgewood college, mm. you know, and I don't even have a fucking college degree. Right. You know, and I wouldn't be doing it if my collaborator, Marion, wasn't working with me. But the fact that, and I teach at Madison College and I don't have a college degree and they know that. No. And so it's, it's like, so if you're trying, to, you can do it without like all of this um, uh, giving into that kind of bureaucracy. Because that's what it, I have the problem with is becomes this major management bureaucracy. Yeah. And. And then all this time and energy is going towards the bureaucracy or and each person's personal life and not into building community in a more grassroots way. And yeah. I think yeah. that for myself over the last 10 years, that's what has had impact in this community is the grassroots community building and the education. Um, you know, so I do teach permaculture, not the PDC, but at Madison College. So mm -hmm. then that makes it more accessible. I, you know, present all over the area and the state. You know, it, it's like, because it can't just be about the PDC, because he, that young man is right. There's some that's, people just that's don't That's the only have, way. It's the well, only way, and, Kate. You're, and it's not, only, it's not only money, it's time yeah. and passion, right? You're asking for a big commitment to have somebody put in 72 hours of pretty intensive days. And yeah. um, not everybody wants to do that, but they're interested. So you have to kind of address all those levels of inviting people into the concepts and, and making changes on municipality levels. You know, that's even harder, right? Yeah. Because oh, that takes like um, here again, community building, uh, uh, having people that actually know some things, willing to run for public office, and, right, right. and um, and then staying connected with them, and it's a very it's a very very long hard haul. And um, but it, I just don't see that. Well, Mollison's desire and goal 
of um, thinking out of the box and some kind of more egalitarian um, sharing of resources. Because when you read the big book, I mean, he really talks a lot about community and and cooperatives and you know yep. different ways of of those things. And um, anyway, uh, so I was just curious. If you have a second beyond what the purpose of this phone call is, I would actually love to show you something that I'm kind of juicing up for the advanced permaculture thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'd love to just just to roll it by you and see what you think. Yeah. Because uh, it's, all, it's all about social permaculture. Right. Um, and trying to, trying to take the tools of kind of the landscape permaculture and say, well, okay, here's how it works on the landscape kind of familiar with that let's flip it into the social world and and how do you just how do you just look around how do you know what's around you right right, right. and how, and so i i don't know it's observation uh, all my students will go <laughs> i'll ask a question they go observation <laughs> <laughs> it's a joke you know because i'm like if you're not seeing you know what's around you right you know whether it's in your garden or whether it's in your world of work and family or community it's um the observation is gives you all the information you need to tweak and make adjustments and decisions yeah. about um uh possibilities of um change or solution or whatever you know comes comes next and so yeah i'm with you i'm with you there so one of the things that that brings up with the engaging emergence one of the things that um, we did to create that curriculum is we took over a year of the three of us, the three co-teachers, collaborating to allow something to emerge. Yeah. So rather than saying, okay, this is what we want, this is our goal, A to B, blah, 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 let's all do it, you know, on a on a chart or a Google, you know, whatever, it was like, okay, how can we be together and emerge this course with all of what we've experienced, people that we've heard about that we want to study more or, you know, yeah. read their books or watch their uh, TED Talks or whatever, and or go to, we went to many different um, workshops and conferences. And, and so how did we allow that to emerge? Because for me, emergence, i felt for years, so before it became a big term, that was a term I was using, and it was kind of way back from Margaret Wheatley talking about it, and it was, that's how I felt the guild was, it emerged. Yeah. You know, I didn't say, I'm going to start a guild, and this is how many people I want, and this is what we're going to do. I just sent out an invitation, and four people showed up. And then eight people showed up, and then more people showed up, and then we were able to offer things, but it, it the intention wasn't for this is I'm starting a guild. The intention was to have others around me so I could share and be supported in what I'd learned at the PDC at Midwest Permaculture. And so it um, it's a very different way. And so when, and Julie and Marion go uh, way back with me and Marion has taught the PDCs with me for about the last five years, and Julie took the PDC four years ago, and, and so it was like how, so we would start the class with, I have this bird divination card deck, and we would mm -hmm. draw a card, right? And we, and we would do a check-in, we would draw a card, and then we would start talking about possibilities or what have we learned since the last time we met. Mm. And eventually, over many months, three buckets were formed. It seemed to just emerge into these three buckets. So then, okay, so what would be um, uh, hands-on and experiential and teachings that would be part of each of those buckets? And eventually, the course was um, formed. And early on, I said to um, Steve Gilchrist, who runs the sustainability leadership or it's not called that anymore, social innovation or whatever the hell it's called, grad program at Edgewood. I just said, we're, we're working on this. What do you think? He goes, we want it. So I knew we had a place to kind of um, uh, do a prototype, right? And um, so it, it just kind of, that's my point, it emerged.
but no, that's not what they're choosing. It's very old style of let's have a meeting. Here's the agenda. Here's, and I'm not saying anything is totally wrong with that, but I'm, I'm not, I don't think it's very innovative as far as yeah. possibilities and people being um, included. We and know, creation. we know what the systems of the past can produce. Right. It's, it's, it's the emergence that we're looking for. We're looking for something different. Right. And, and yeah, it makes me, it makes me think like if you're making a design and you know, you're, you already know what the outcome's going to be. Like it's going to be these things that I already know exist, like right. these swales and this and that, then you're not, you're not emerging. Like the, I think the point is to, to take that space and the people that occupy it and allow something to emerge between them that, that kind of meets the ethics as totally. maybe goals or, you know, and, and to just, to just Clients, especially on big land, but on all land, I ask yeah. them to fill out a questionnaire and, and I give them things to think about. Right. Yeah. I don't do a lot of design compared to some people, but I do a lot of consultations and, and, you know, cause they ultimately it's theirs. Yeah. They, they have to learn to live with it, to be with it, maintain it, whatever, yeah. whatever it's going to take over time or not right you know you can look at my wild yard but but the point is is not going in like and i know exactly what should be on your property right <laughs> and, and yeah. thing that really influenced us was uh garden awakening by mary reynolds out of ireland she's a permie mm -hmm. and a recovering landscape architect recovering That's and great. so she brings in like you know um wishing walls and you know different private spaces or ritual spaces or whatever into the possibility that is so wonderful because it's not just about the native edibles. It's not just how much, how many pounds of food did I produce? This right. year? If I, you know, see one more post, that's lovely. That's wonderful. But did you have fun? You know, were you, did you have the time to, to uh, process it all, how much did you give away? <laughs> you know, just questions of, and no, not judgment even, but just curiosity. Like, well, what does that mean? Was that the end goal? And maybe it was, or maybe it wasn't. I don't know, but trying to understand what, and what people really want, and also trying to get them to understand that it is going to evolve and change as it unfolds. Because it always does, right? So you can say, this is the plan, blah, blah, blah. And then you dig down and, you know, there's an old cement patio buried there. It's and that's like, it. <laughs> and that's it. What, so what do you do? Do you punt? Do you pay to have somebody come take it, you know, um, pound it out and take it away? Um, so the, and that's just a real graphic example, right? But, but then also it's like, so what happens if you injure yourself? What happens as you get older? What what happens, you know, are you fine with the apples dropping and letting the animals or, you know, or other people come pick them if you can't? It's it's like, um, those are the things that, so that to me is emergent, right? It's like right. an emergent design, right? That people can't think that a design, here it is on paper and that's static because it absolutely never is. Yeah. After the first season, we know it, it's not static. <laughs> it's totally not. It's like putting in, I have a pawpaw tree that's huge, has leaves like this big, yeah. and I cannot get a second tree to go. Huh. It's so weird. Now I'm putting two more in yet this week, and but I cannot get a second tree to go. I planted two in the beginning, one made it, planted two more since then, and um, two different seasons, and now I'm going to try two more in there. But it, it's so, you know, what do you do about that? Well, I have a suggestion. Yeah, what's that? Uh, just start throwing seeds down in the bushes. Uh, papa seeds? Papa seeds, yeah. Just, mm -hmm. just keep throwing them down. Let them, let to, Let nature... Uh, Take yeah, it. don't do it. Why, why control it? My, so my mom has pawpaw. She's got five pawpaw trees. 
in her in her yard, um, and she's got these arborvitaes, yeah, kind of next to the, one of the pawpaw trees or two of them, and then she's got these these like giant yew bushes in front of the house, and it's next to another pawpaw, and they all have pawpaws growing up in them. It's like wow. you, you look inside, I got a picture I could show you. It's just like you look inside, and there's all these wow. little pawpaws all over the place. Well, they do love that shade. Yeah. Yeah, so so why not uh, find a good tree? Good, That's a good, good idea. Fruit, and just throw it in and, and let it do its thing. Because it, when you're, because they, they have that tap root that, right. that can be really difficult. And uh, just keep an eye out for them. Yeah, that's a good idea. Because I know it's pretty, I, wild, it's pretty wild back there. That would probably yeah. be a better way for it to, to be. The other one's thriving. But, and my, so my point is that things yeah. merge and evolve. Yes. And we don't know what the outcome is going to be. We think we know or we want to know. And it's not that. Not, I mean, you can do it to a certain extent. But mm. and then how much resources, and uh, whether it's your time or money or other types of resources, do you, do you use trying to make something happen that, that maybe doesn't want to happen? right or yes. your soil's not right or whatever it is so it's all an experiment is it, well, it it's, is? it's how, how do you interact with a complex system exactly. and you don't you don't tell it how to behave no you know you you, you interact with it and right. you let something emerge right and, and as mary reynolds which another thing i like about her very much it's like you're asking the land and the plants and the, what do you want and trying to open your ears and your heart and your mind and whatever senses one uses to listen in that way to try to hear what it's telling you. So to all that, the people. Yes. And that, and that's a whole different way too, where it's, it's not like, okay, I'm just going to go out and weave. Right. I mean, because still people, even in permaculture, yeah. are talking a lot about weeding or they make that swale and berm. It's like just all these real, you know, um, they think cut and dry systems, and then over time, nature shifts it. Well, I mean, I think like, for example, what you, what you guys did from your PDC course in Bill and Becky's yard is you, you dug all those uh, like rain gardens, I guess they are, right, you right. Know, the, the swale and berm system or whatever right. it is. And, uh, you know, thinking about it, like, what you did is you you made you made like a major intervention. So you know maybe on the scale of permanence, right, in the landform and how the water works in in that area. And, and then it's still evolving, right? Oh, they, totally. they didn't just just do that and then plan it up, right? No. They no. did that and then they just kind of eased Watched into it, like, and observed and tweaked yeah. and made changes. Yeah. yeah, in any system that that's. That's just part of it, right? Yeah, but but making that major change and realizing that that they could intervene in that way uh, to to shape the way that the water works on, on the landscape uh, differently, rather than just running away from their house, right? Um, and 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 I think that was the the biggest thing that happened there. Oh yeah, you know, I, mean, that, I think so too, as far as holding water and yeah. And, and creating the model in the front yard that gets seen. Right. That, uh, that's a huge piece of it, too, even in their tiny little stealth town. Yeah. Right? So, that's right. Yeah. And, so, and that's the whole example of, like, you, you take a course, and it affects your life, and you come away. And I always say to people, well, sure, you're certified, but you're going to have to keep reading and taking classes and workshops and conferences and whatever to build your tools and your skills because right. that's just the, the bottom line, like skeleton of systems thinking and with, um, you know, bucket full, you know, buckets full of uh, various solutions, which are this much of, you know, this many, or solutions that haven't even been, you know, um, uh, I don't want to say invented, but haven't been discovered, right? Right. You know, in, in our times, it doesn't mean they've never been, 
because that's what this is all about, right? A lot of it is is re you know retweaking you know um, solutions of hundreds and hundreds of years of, of um, humanity and working in the in the land. So um, why would we think that? Like going away, you know that all of a sudden, yeah, we're an ex we're an expert. We know everything. That's the whole thing when yes. when I teach and I learned this from Marion years ago. Just the whole pedagogy. It's like you know we even at Madison College at the PDCs, everything, and even when I go teach and present to whether it's master gardeners or whatever groups it is around the state i always say there is much knowledge in this room and i want you to feel comfortable sharing it within this venue right because i i don't know everything how could one ever know everything one can't and so it's it's i'm sharing with you and then i ask for your input and your sharing back um, because then that's a different pedagogy of education, not like I'm the master and you're my student um, mentality that a lot of people seem to get caught in. And I can say, honestly, it, it can be challenging to not be caught in it because people want to put you there. But mm -hmm. you, so you have to keep saying no, 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 you know, um, there's so much that you know, so much more you can know. And so much that you don't even know that you intuitively know mm -hmm. until you get it slow down enough and be in touch with yourself enough to be able to listen to that, right? Yeah. So, anyway, but I'm very, I mean, so my journey with permaculture since the PDC, you know, I never would have expected how it played out, right? I, you, didn't, you didn't plan it? No. No, I mean, I went in, I, I already had training and experience in sustainability and in gardening and landscape and certainly in natural systems as far as being a nature lover and being raised connected with nature. But no, I, I just thought there was going to be more possibilities. But I honestly didn't know what those would be. And at first, you know, I really... You know, because Wayne and, and Mark, who were my two teachers, were like, everybody can go out and you can just start designing and blah, blah, blah. And, and I knew immediately that was a bunch of bullshit. And <laughs> um, that, I mean, you could, but, you know, if you asked for $40, you know, because you were a beginner and, right. and it was a learning experience. And, um, and the same with even public speaking and, and teaching that, that it would be a journey and and the and the guild like i say that wasn't that wasn't planned like i'm going to start a permaculture guild that just kind of happened for my need to have it be community connected so no i had had no idea and i've been you know spiritually you know on my life journey my spirit journey my soul journey since I was, you know, literally 22 years old. So to have that end up becoming a much bigger part in it, mm -hmm. because I'm not sure I initially, because it wasn't being offered to me in any way, right, by teachers that I had, that um, Bill a little bit, um, Bill Wilson, but it's like, how was that going to be part of it? How was that social permaculture, right? And that, um, heaven forbid that you use the word spiritual. You know, I was reprimanded when I was asked into a Midwest permit, not by Bill or Becky um, or even Mark, by Wayne. <laughs> you shouldn't even really? use the word spiritual and you should never tell anybody you're a witch. Uh, and it was like, well, what, what, it doesn't mean that I'm asking them to be a witch. Yeah. You know, it's like, and so the lines were blurry as far as like, well, but honestly, to tell your story and be with people in an authentic way is what forms community, in my opinion. But I'm pretty sure there's a lot of research backing that up. So it, it, it was a puzzlement um, a little bit because the, who was kind of 
the hierarchy above me at that point that was frowned upon. Not, you know, like I say, not so much um, Bill, but, and certainly not Becky, but she wasn't as involved at that point. No, she's, she's cooking become and doing much more. Work and, yeah. yeah. And so, and I really liked it when she became more involved once they were doing transition stuff, because mm -hmm. it kind of brought that balance in that was sorely needed, right? So, yeah. And, and it's interesting to see how, you know, that all weaves, weaves out, you know, and, and so, so one of the things somebody was saying to me, well, my cousin got pissed me is like, thinks that I think way too big of myself and I'm some guru and blah, blah, blah. And, and I don't even know how he doesn't even live here. He lives an hour away and he's making assumptions based on really little to no information. And, and I'm like, but I collaborate on everything because yeah. I'm way more comfortable collaborating and the students are going to get way more from multiple personalities. Oh and, my gosh. Yes. And experiences and knowledge than just me. And so I don't even know where you're coming away from that. And that's not only permaculture, but all my spiritual work, it's the same, it's the same thing. So it was just kind of funny. And I think some of it is, people see what they they want to see and but and that's the thing too it's like so i've gotten some recognition but i don't make that much money it's like and yeah. if it was about money i wouldn't be doing this right you know what i'm saying because right. i was fortunate enough and tom went along with it and it's been painful at times but so but no i had no idea where when i got that pdc 10 years ago right i knew that it changed my life yeah. I knew that it gave credibility to much of what I um, believed and had witnessed in the natural world, uh, but I had no idea, right? And it was and it was okay to not have an idea, you know, was, because was, if once we say this is our goal, we miss out on all these other possibilities. Yeah. Yep. We need and to be that, open to it. Yeah, and that's the thing about I get opportunities dropped on me out of the blue like all the time, yeah. right? And I couldn't predict or know. I'm starting to do a little more around death and dying now and a little more officiating as far mm. as um, weddings and funerals. And it, it's, uh, it, it's diverse, right? It's, it's stacking functions, mm -hmm. right? And... Um, and that makes people nervous. They want, you know, they want everything. Like even permaculture, people want it in this like box. And this is what permaculture is. And right. I don't think Bill Mollison had that in that box at all. And he was a jerk. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he was a womanizing philander weirdo. But his concepts were huge as far as possibility. Right. Yeah. Let's not throw the, the baby out with the bathwater. But uh, the bathwater is pretty, pretty stinky too. Um, yes. The, the uh, so what, what what kind of what kind of projects are you like? What would you say if you wanted to show someone your main projects? If I was going to feature them on some sort of website article or, you know, uh, what what would you want me to tell people? Well, I'd say. You know, to be honest, my biggest project has been the Permaculture Guild mm. and the education that I do. As far as land and water project, you know, there's various ones, but especially the public ones, it's they may or may not be successful still because yeah. um, it was clear, and which is why I stopped doing a lot of them, was their. Uh, was not stewardship and they expected me to feel the stewardship to continue to maintain them. Right. And, you know, even in Monona, so I have a rain garden off the public library. Um, it was a huge big deal. I did an educational hands-on workshop. It was created by members in the community. It is still functioning, but it took almost four years to get the woman that oversees the grounds, who, by the way, is a volunteer from the garden club, um, to even understand how to deal with it. 
because mm -hmm. she didn't have native plant experience. And, um, and so I finally made a, a three ring binder up with every single plant that was in there with a picture and then how it grows and how do you maintain it and what did it, you know, and put it all in protective <laughs> sheets and gave it to her and said, here, you know, you're a smart woman. It's like, go with it. <laughs> but um, I don't know, there's the water project up at the church and that's been really, you know, the big, huge swale and berm above a community garden at um, a Monona church. That, but that's been real hit and miss too. It, um, the three-tier rain garden has been filled in by construction <laughs> accidentally like two different times over the last eight years. The uh, swale and berm was narrowed to put a walking bridge on and they put a culvert and wasn't running all the way to the end of it. And then finally it was re trench this year rescooped out which because it had just anyway so there there's many things that are out there um the public ones you know i don't know the private ones that i helped people kind of um, create and and design for them i mean they're they're certainly out there but it's nothing like a big farm scale permaculture homestead thing well i I would like to hear more about the permaculture guild. I mean, so so you said you just, um, I got I got some stuff earlier, so right. I can definitely I, I'm right. gonna like right. mash mash words in your yeah, mouth. Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. Edit, you know, big edit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. So and I'm not I'm not scared to to do that. Um, but t tell me about like uh. Uh, the, the permaculture guild. So the guild came together and it was just kind of more almost like a meetup. Like I put an ad in the free Isthmus newspaper just saying, does anybody want to meet and talk about permaculture? Four people showed up. It was at the aging coalition where I worked. I was able in the evening to use the space, the meeting space. And then mm -hmm. the next month, eight people showed up and then 20 people showed up and and then we got a bigger meeting place at a local church that was kind enough to offer us let us use a room oh nick the assistant minister at that time he's no longer there was uh way into sustainability and was very supportive so um we met there for probably i don't know six years and um, mm. oh first we went to public library rooms then we were there and and then recently we've been at another church of a member. So mm -hmm. downtown trying to make it more accessible because mm -hmm. Monona, there's no bus that comes here. And, and, and so, um, but so to be honest with you, so the meetings, depending on if we have a speaker or not, and depending on whether I can um, pull it all together or not, because nobody's really, um, taken that over or assisted too much with that mm -hmm. a little bit here and there but um it's we could have 12 people and we could have 40 people so it's always unknown we try to start it with a potluck and we try to have it monthly but like i've been really busy and i took time off late summer and early fall mm -hmm. i actually said i'm stepping away for a while i need um vacation and rejuvenation and spaciousness. So um, not a lot has happened, but I did rejuvenate. And so there's, but the thing that's been most successful is kind of hands-on projects. So, um, and how, when people can participate. So tabling at the garden expo, mm -hmm. or asking people to present, um, asking people to present at meetings on various, th their, um, interests or why they came into permaculture mm -hmm. uh the other thing is uh, of course the pdc but um things like uh, uh plugging mushroom logs right um our plant sale people come out and volunteer for mm -hmm. that and donate things and um so they actually do show up 
And but the most probably resilient part of it, and you'll laugh because you're you, is um, the Google group. It's over 500 people and it's active and it's from people in a pretty wide area around this part of southern Wisconsin. And so there's a lot of exchange of plants, trees, shrubs, um, soil, wood chips, uh, mm. properties for sale, who can do this, who can do that. It, it's, a, it's a huge mix of um, sharing of resources and information and people connecting. So, and oftentimes this is, and this is why Bill and Becky probably want this done. I oftentimes don't know like somebody who shows up at, at the PDC, right? And, and I don't always know how it threads out in their lives. Mm -hmm. If they're not the kind of person that has the time to be involved with a permaculture guild or club or whatever you want to call it, um, one, so sometimes I'll hear uh, and I'll go, oh, I didn't know that story. That it's like this wonderful story of how it threaded out. And here again, in ways oftentimes that I never would imagine. So, um, so the guild is like kind of, it's still a hodgepodge. And I have told people that in a you know, couple of years, within the next couple of years, I will need to be more um, stepped out of it. Mm -hmm. and, and I've said, whatever happens is fine. If people want to step into those roles, great. And if they don't, that's great too. Uh, so, because what I have noticed, so I have a lot of the personal relationships with people, but they don't all necessarily with each other. And so mm. you want to get more of those people that thread through right. more, more people, right? And not everybody's cut out for that. <laughs> or they don't have time in their lives for that. Yeah. Right? But not everybody's a people person, like Bill Wilson is, or I am, or, you know, um, whoever. It, it's, it's, uh, it takes a certain um, – well, I, and I don't want to say personality, but an openness, right? Of, yeah. Uh, and, and early on – you know, building my skills as a community leader, like with art of hosting and other ways of how do you invite people into something, mm -hmm. whether it's an idea or a project or a meeting or whatever it is, and how do we collaborate with each other? And is it pretty good or is it pretty stinky? You know, so, and I had those bad experiences early on with collaborating so in the guild, it's amazing. So when, or even in the PDCs, if there are more women teaching or they're the leaders, women show up. Mm -hmm. And if it's, it's just those kind of men, and I know there's lovely men because Drew, I work with Drew Carlson and he mm -hmm. is incredible and wonderful. And, and he calls me his mentor, but it's certainly a reciprocal thing. And, and, but it's, uh, but he's not, you know, he's more mature and more um, sensitive and truly into, like, what, what's good for everyone, mm -hmm. right? It's not about this bottom line, I need to make $150,000 this year or whatever, you know? Right. And, and uh, so it's not like men aren't in there because we have wonderful men in the mix. But what's been astonishing is how many women show up. And this last PDC, it was great because a whole bunch of young women showed up. Mm. And they all have like degrees and ecology and biology. And we had uh, two medical doctors and a mm. chiropractor. And who else did we? I mean, we had <laughs> a lot of, you know, heavily educated people and and. And they were incredible, but this whole slew of young women showed up. And it was just totally wonderful and cool to, to know that how it would be threaded out is through, you know, the, the science world or through the healing world or through, you know, all these different worlds. Because that's what I try to teach is that this kind of systems thinking is applicable to anything. 
It can be applicable to your workplace. Just like you asked, it can be applicable to running a board or an organization or, you know, so. Well, and ideally it should, it should be used. It should. Yeah. <laughs> but, it should, but we forget and we fall we, back into old habits. Yeah. And, and we, what can we do the fastest and the most efficiently? And, well, and the, 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 there are definitely aspects of the culture that are pretty insidious and in, in demand that, that kind of yeah. fast action fast, you know, they're like, right. Hey, you want to talk about this? It's, you know, this, these are your, your feelings. That's imaginary. Why, you know, just get over it. Like, let's do the thing. Right. Which is why I didn't go for a stupid 501 C3. Yeah. I said, people I've worked in that world for much of my adult life, right. Off and on in small businesses and nonprofits. And it all becomes about how are you promoting and bringing money to pay for staff? And this way we don't have that. So the money we bring in pays for scholarships. It pays for, you know, public pro projects and um, for us to be able to put out education. I mean, this, this, and that, and, and the cost of the website. Right. And the cost of liability insurance for projects. It's like, that's, that's pretty much our overhead. Nobody gets paid. I get paid for the PDC, but as a contractor, I'm not right. an employee. No, we have no employees. We have no paid staff. I said, so to me, that's a resilient, you know, yeah. grassroots thing because one, I've seen it so many times because I've been part of it, right? It's like all of a sudden it's all about plotting and planning and visioning and writing grants and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden you're not, that's the whole thing with the board. It's yeah. like not one person said boo about, well, is there a way that, I mean, even is there a way that we as an organization could even contribute to somebody going down to Houston or somebody going to Puerto Rico or so, you know what I mean? It, it never even came up. Yeah. Well, that's not, it's not the plan. Whereas on the guild, things were offered up to each other. Mm. Here, I have this friend, you know, or this family member or whatever it was. Right. I know this is where the money's going. Here are options for you to contribute. And um, so then that that's different, right? And, and it's not always perfect, but, and there's certainly people that kind of come into it and they may be disappointed by the looseness of it. Um, and yearn for something more concrete. But I think over the long haul, we've had more impact in our community by doing it that way. Because mm. like I said, all those people, they thread it out. And mostly, unlike probably Becky and Bill's, mostly our people are local, you know, that are taking the PC, PDC. There's maybe 10%. I'd be surprised if it's more than 12% that aren't over the years, but mostly it's all local. That's, that's a huge uh, shift in the dynamic of PDCs. Cause that's, that's what, what I noticed uh, teaching with Rhonda and William, that they were all locals. Uh, to the Chicago area. To the Chicago area. Yeah, it, uh, they're they're still active. They're still meeting for for lunch and get-togethers yeah. and and uh, huge huge difference than than those courses Everybody, where people come. Yes. Yeah, and and uh, we also had the six month, you know. So we right, we I know drew things out a little bit, and that that was effective then to help create the connections and the meetings in between, you know, or working right. on projects, whereas, it, you know, you do two weeks or you right. know, eight days or whatever you do, and you, you're there and then you're gone. Right. Well, the last couple of years, I've done it over um, four and a half to five months, um, but that got a little hard, simply more um, for people's lives, especially to get a lot of young people involved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we have done it over three months. So next year we're doing it um, March, April, May. So it's three three-day weekends. Okay. So um, that, and as it turned out, Marianne, who for a couple of years, like five, four years ago, she just did like kind of the beginning 
weekend with systems thinking and some of the areas that pedagogy, all that kind of stuff that um, she's very, very knowledgeable and skilled in. And then myself and, and uh, others um, took it from there. But then this last uh, couple years, she wanted to do the whole thing and it totally burned her out. <laughs> By the end of this year, I mean, it's literally, I never want to teach a book of PDC. <laughs> she was like, yeah. so burnt out. And we had a big class. It's a lot I mean, of work, too. We had, yeah. 18, we had 18 people. And it, it's different to manage 18 people than eight people, right? Yes. But I was certainly able to pay her what she really wanted rather than what, you know, if you have eight people, you don't have that much extra <laughs> money. But it, yeah. You know what I mean? And it's yeah. relatively oh, yeah. small compared to what many of these teachers are making, right? And, and because, like I said, I let people use scholarship dollars. What are scholarship dollars? It's what the Guild has done its book sales for mm -hmm. at the Expo, at the Convergence, at the um, plant sale, the trees and shrub, whatever profit we have after you know getting all the stock to have the sale. That all goes into allowing that that possibility because the main mission is education so and i think that may, is what makes this pdc different right it, and um but she was totally burned out and and it is it, it's hard you're a teacher you know it's like so it's a lot of psychic energy to, to be is. on for yeah for for a weekend i mean I, I think that's part of what made me so sick oh sure you know, is is and then and then I'd come home, to go to go to my mom's, and it was kids. Right. Because I brought my kids with me, because my oh, wife had just gotten hit by a car. So it was it was a way to get give her some rest. Do it right. You know, so I so I and my my parents were very helpful, but okay. they're still your kids. <laughs> yeah, still my kids. That's right. <laughs> well, and I I get concerned about that, even with myself. It's like. When Tom and I um, did our trip, so it was, first of all, I had to say, because he works full time and he plays music part time. Yeah. And I had to say months ago, we need to have these two weeks and three weekends off mm. because we haven't done anything like this for 10 years. And we both really need to not only take a break from work, but to be away. Yeah. To be away from our daily lives, to be out in nature, to be able to, and, um, but also by um, after the P, I realize, and fortunately, I'm I am privileged enough because of Tom's full time income, where I said I need to fall back in love with summer. So yeah. at the end of summer, <laughs> I I said I, I'm I'm kind of checking out as far as um, those responsibilities. It's not like I didn't work at all. I did. Right. And, you know, I still teach at Madison College and I still had dates to present a couple dates I commitments but mm -hmm. I said I need to self-care because I I don't I don't feel that same excitement Much. I don't feel energy any the I don't have the extra and and it was a beautiful and we got a standing ovation at the end of this PDC and mm -hmm. poor Marion that helped her a little bit but she was fried yeah. Right. And so I, you know, it's hard work. And that's why when people say, you know, oh, you make so much money. And I'm like, well, you're just seeing the 72 hours were there. And by the way, that's really intense. But you're not even seeing all the hours it takes to come up with promotion and putting things into place, mm. uh, renting porta potties, finding a venue, working yeah. with the people, dealing with your coworkers, setting up the schedule. So it's not just the curriculum and you're always tweaking that if you're a good teacher because you keep learning more. And so you, tweak yep. it. but it's also the day-to-day -day schedule, how it's practically going to work and on and on and on. And so uh, it's, it, people just think it's those 72 hours you show up. And I said, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Yeah. That's the lead. That's, and, and that part is hard, but it's, it's just the beginning. Right. Right. So I, I don't even believe, I admire you for being able to even do that weekend. Is it a two day weekend? It was a three day weekend. And then uh, we're going to have a two day weekend on, on, so five days total. Yeah. Um, 
the second weekend should be easier because it's design time and presentation. Right. So, so that you know, once you hit that point, then then usually you're like, oh, okay. What did you kind of focus on for your advanced course? I mean, you don't have to give me the curriculum. Oh but. no, that's okay. Well, it was it was a lot about about you know uh upping your design skills uh being more professional uh you know um trying to remember all the stuff yeah just a, li a little bit deeper dive into like building and and building codes and we uh we we had the guy that was helping us host the class was was pretty knowledgeable about all that um Just a lot more in detail on various areas. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I mean, talking, the, talking about the business aspects. Yeah. Really, and and um, and I, I felt very happy that I just put in that point, like, hey, you know, you don't have to do this to make money. You can you can do this to yeah to help your community. Like that's that's right. actually a better better uh you know more ethical goal maybe you'll make some money that's nice right, but, right. but uh you know what, what's your intention right you know right. and if if your intention is to make money then it won't be as good as if your intention is to you know to to better your community Provide to, to increase to local right. resilience to right. heal the planet you know all, all that right. stuff right heal people right. Right. So, right. That and that's an important thing to remember. I mean, and most people won't go away, and hopefully, they'll thread it into whatever um, does come into their life as far as um, right livelihood. But it, it's um, many people, uh, other than the the basics of how to think and observe and systems thinking. They, they may not use a lot of it, but if they do that, that's a big deal. Well, I think, I think that that's the key is, is what we need is to get people to, to put it into their lives. And to, that's, that's where we, we really uh, have opportunity right. in, in teaching the PDC right. is, to, is to show people how they can take this thing and put it into their lives almost, almost with, with very little, you know, change. Like it's, it's pretty much, you just start thinking a little bit differently, start attacking problems a little differently. And I, I think it, it manifests right. uh, in, in what you do along the way. So certainly helped me when I started, when I was teaching guitar, um, that it that it uh it just made me feel a lot more sure about about what i was doing and like okay i don't have to i don't have to control this thing i don't have to make it do this this or that right, it's right. Uh, okay we're working with the system a does not equal b you know or, or a plus b does not equal c right it's like we right. gotta you know take the long view take the slow view and and just work Right. Look at it and know, 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 kind of know the system, know, know where the energies are and know the features of the system, but to, to be directional in what you're doing. Right. Well, yeah, because system, so many systems are placed, but if we don't have the tools and skills to even analyze what's there and then be willing to educate and teach other possibilities and oftentimes they're not accepted right i mean i know because i've been you know i've served on county um committees and, right. and my own community and stuff but that doesn't mean they don't have effect right the effect is just different slightly than what the intention was to begin with didn't mean that it totally changed regulation or policy but it started conversations of possibility into the future, right? That's right. And so, you know, what's to say that's not as important as being able, because policy is very hard and regulation is very hard to, oh to, to change. Well, it's a very, very slow process. Yeah, it's, 
it's it, like it, habit. <laughs> and that's why people getting into that. And then if they go to a workplace and there's another person, all of a sudden they discover at the water cooler, that person did a PDC and is interested in permaculture. And then all of a sudden there's somebody else that you know within that organization or bureaucracy or wherever you're working that, that um, understands how to think that way. And then it becomes right. something else too. Right? They, get, they become an ally and, and, kind of understand how maybe you're working and why you're not getting that right. C result because you know, you're, you're looking at the end of the alphabet and that's not the beginning. Right. So, right. So in terms of me having to create some sort of a, you know, meet Kate and, right. uh, it's all about the guild. Yeah. I, that's, that's, what, that's what I heard. And education. Okay. I mean, and, there's been lots of projects and lots of wonderful things uh, that have happened, and there's been designs and and but it's really I think the larger piece of it for me has been um, the community piece of it, right? Yeah. So the guild and the educational piece that I was able to bring it into Madison College and Edgewood College. That's that's a pretty big deal, and and. Yeah. Um, uh, and to bring a community of people together and, uh, you know, support Drew and doing the convergence, you know, those are, those are big deals. Those are big deals. So yeah. well, I, I think that's a lot of, if you, if you want, if you really looked at the scope of all the stuff I'm doing, that's probably the biggest. Yeah. Of it. Well, and the, I mean, the, the physical designs, the systems, whatever, are flashy, but they're they're not much if there's not the people to inhabit them, and right. and to create more, because yeah. because one one system does not, I mean, we're not creating necessarily self propagating systems, and that's that's right what we need. And I do do a lot, a fair amount of consulting and, and design, but it, but not that much installation. Mm -hmm. And usually if I do have an installation job, it's like one tiny piece of somebody's bigger, you know, dream or vision. And it's not like a whole installation mm -hmm. of, of a property. Um, it's like doing water stuff, right? Cause somebody mm -hmm. has a water problem or, you know, creating raised beautiful brick stone beds for a guy with a lot of resources because he wanted fruit trees and blueberries, right? Right. And and so that's pretty cool because it's on his business property. It's and it's not even at his home and, mm. and he wanted so there are things like that that I feel really good about. It's not like I haven't, but I think the wider impact thing has definitely been the education and the community building. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to. The mentoring. The, I yeah. mean, and that's been huge, and that doesn't even go recognized except by the kindly by the people that I do mentor. Mm -hmm. um, by anybody, right? I mean, you don't get paid for it. It's, it's like it's it's a it's just one of those things that I think is the right thing to do as an elder right mm -hmm. it's, and but also with that is and the stage of your life shifts things too at least for me it does mm -hmm. because i know life is precious and i have to be getting enough of those wonderful things that make my heart sing and it may have nothing to do with permaculture mm -hmm. or it may be totally part of permaculture but that um like the trip to the Southwest that Tom and I took. I mean, that, that was like to see Red Rocks in Colorado, Arches, Bryce Canyon, Cedar Breaks Monument, Zion National Park, North and South, Rim of the Grand Canyon, and Santa Fe, you know, 15 days, 4,000 miles of total spaciousness, awesomeness, and wildness. This is the boonies. Mm -hmm. These, this is thousands of miles, mostly not inhabited, right? Except by wildlife. And so it, precious, right? And I realized at this stage in my life that, you know, I have to make sure to be getting that. 
because yeah. a lot of our lives ago, I can do that later. I can do that later. And now I'm in later. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You better start start jumping on it. Well, you know. uh, I have to leave to get my son in five Go. minutes. Go. So, so I just want. If, if you want to. Uh, just some pictures. Pic what, is, want me to send you pictures? Yeah, whatever you like. Uh, I, I think I only would have use for. I want like one of you, you know, maybe I'll, I'll pull like the class picture or something. Oh and yeah, then, that's a lovely little picture. Yeah, and then uh, and and then just just something that characterizes, I think, the guild and and or maybe the conversion or so all all those things. The tree grafting workshop or the mushroom plugging. A any of that stuff, yeah. Just yeah. just people, really, and and or preferably class. You you in it. Uh, I think for this. Well, usually I'm the photographer. Yeah, that's, I know how that goes. That's uh, hard. That's hard. But I have some wonderful, you know, um, I'll see what I can come up with. Yeah. I'll look through the photos. It's not like I don't have thousands of them. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I do. I'm always taking pictures because that was one thing Bill Wilson was very verbal about. Record, oh, man. Record your story. That yeah. was a huge thing was to to do that and that's an invitation into others yes it is so whenever so yeah i will send you a few and if you need something else then let me well, know yeah we'll, we'll we'll be in touch but it was nice to reconnect with you it was very nice to reconnect i always miss you yeah. go pick up your son we'll talk uh, again great Bye. thanks kate you bet bye bye